guys. this didn't warp that bad? I don't know. Just in case I mushroom this out a little bit by hitting on it. <sighs> yeah, you can see it kind of this one kind of moved down a little bit, so it's not that bad. It's not off terribly, so. So we got the pivot points welded onto the swing arm. That's now done. Now, next thing we need to do is the motor mounts. Now, I'm gonna be making the motor mounts out of this three quarter inch uh, plate steel that I have. I'm just gonna be cutting a couple strips out of this and then we need, just need to machine some notches uh, into this. So therefore this can notch into here and we can clamp it in place and then just simply weld this onto the swing arm. So it's stuck on here. I have to grind down this weld because it's actually stuck on here. So give me a moment. is not light, I'll admit.
Now I'm gonna have to redo how I mount this sprocket onto here because uh, this, yeah, these bolts are just gonna chew the crap out of this cord. If I leave it like this, I need to replace these with uh, countersink screws. Now, with this mount, we're not only relying on the nut to, uh, you know, to hold this thing into place, but mainly I wanted to make it to where this bolt, technically a screw, but this bolt clamps down onto here and clamps onto this, uh, onto this axle, so therefore keeping it from spinning and loosening and all that kind of stuff. So at this point, it's like, do we really even need this anymore? But I'm, I'm still gonna put it on there. You know, just for, I don't know. So I forget uh, what exactly this stuff is, but I get it on Amazon. It's some type of plastic that is used as bushing material. It works great for uh, bushings and it machines really well. Now, it shrinks if you heat it up to a certain degree, and I forgot to remove these. When welding this, and of course welding this, heated this whole part up, heated up these, and now, now this thing is super loosened here, and it just like falls out. It was like a perfect pressed fit, it wasn't too tight, it wasn't too loose, and now, now it heated up, and now it's way too loose. So, yeah, I'm gonna have to remake these. Alright, so the swing arm is pretty much at the point where we can now finally mock it up in the dirt bike frame and figure out how in the world we're actually going to get this set up to work. Uh, we still we still need to add the chain tensioners, but we can do that later, as well as the thing that sticks out right here to keep the caliper from spinning. Uh, we need to add that as well. I'll, also, I did buy a new caliper because this one's pretty old. It's the Pistons frozen, so I just I bought a new one. So let's take let, let's take the dirt dirt bike frame. Let's get it on the table. I want to clamp it onto the table, so therefore we can take the swing arm off, the old swing arm off, put the new one on while still keeping the proportions of like how high the seat is when the suspension's at full rest and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, let's finally mock up the swing arm in the frame. <laughs> So I guess this tire is filled with water, because I'm trying to fill the tire up. And it just keeps spraying water out. I'll admit, this thing is uh, a little heavy, so this cable is annoying. We're definitely going to have to heavily modify this frame to get this up to work. I was originally wanting to try and leave these alone and just, you know, cut whatever's in the way and just kind of put this in place and just make new tabs. 
But uh, after looking at this, these are not symmetrical. This one's a little bit further back than this one. This one's further down than this one. So I think, I think it's just gonna be a lot easier just to cut these out and kind of just, you know, make new ones. I'm gonna try to leave the foot pegs where they are. So for now, I'm gonna leave this alone. We're probably gonna have to modify this a little bit as well to get the battery to fit. As well as, is there gonna be, once we get this in place, is there gonna be room for the shock? That's, uh, not sure about that. Hopefully there's room for that. Uh, definitely gonna have to cut this middle section out, cut this out, cut this out, take this off for now. And, uh, yeah, just make new ones and make a new part of the frame. So, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to heavily modify this thing to get it to work, but, uh, I think we can, I think we can get it to work. Hopefully. scare me like that so it looks like I need to further cut this I need to cut this pretty much kind of flush with the mounts for that and then the battery is gonna be here is this gonna work It's, it's a bit cramped, but I think we can make this work. So originally I was gonna try to mount this uh, pivot point in a little bit higher than the original swing arm was, but after looking at it, we don't really need that because I wanna make sure that this motor has pl plenty of ground clearance. And right now with this at the original spot where the uh, swing arm was mounted, this motor is pretty much almost level with the frame. And when the suspension moves down, when the frame moves down, the suspension moves up, the motor's gonna move up a little bit. So I, I think it's fine. I think the motor has plenty of ground clearance right here. Plus, uh, we need to we need to make uh, enough room for the battery and everything, which is going to go pretty much perfect right here. We just have to cut this out and make new tubing that sticks out a little bit more. Now, I did have to lengthen this thing a little bit. The original wheelbase from bolt to bolt of the tires was 50 inches. Now it's 53, so it's three inches longer. I don't think that's the end of the world. If anything, it's going to make it more stable at high speeds. So it's, we just had to do that to make room for everything, make room for the battery and the motor and everything. So yeah, it's a little cramped, but I think I can I think I can pull this off. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna spend some time lining this thing up perfectly, making sure it's all in a perfect straight line, making sure it's all level with each other, making sure that this is you know centered and everything, and then I can uh, cut out some tabs that is start that go from here up to here, so that we can drill holes. That's a pivot point, and figure out how we're connecting it up to this.
Whoops. Whoops. Yeah, didn't really think about that, about the sprocket getting really close to this, and then especially with the suspension moving up. Yeah, now the sprocket's hitting it, so... Yeah, I'll just have to cut out a big notch right here. Now, we need to figure out how we're connecting this up to here, so I'm probably just gonna use tubing, something like that. So I ground away a little bit at this, and it looks like it now clears the sprocket. Now, before I put this on, uh, we need to modify this. I need to cut these off. Uh, I'm gonna try, I wanna try and keep this as original as possible because these tabs are what hold the plastics on and hold the seat on. And I wanna still have the plastics and still have the seat and everything, so I'm trying to keep this as original as possible. We do have to modify uh, the bottom portion, so I'm gonna cut these off at the tabs right here and here, and then we'll just, you know, weld on new ones that, you know, go somewhere else. need to figure out where we're putting the shock for the rear suspension. Now my original idea was adding a hoop to right here so therefore we can mount the shock pretty much right about here. Now the more I'm looking at that the more I'm like no nah, that is that's not gonna work. If we did do that uh, the higher the suspension travel would go the softer the suspension would feel due to just where the pivot point is for this and where the pivot point is for this. Yeah just it it wouldn't work. So now, now I'm thinking, what if we just take the shock and just mount it next to the motor right here? It's all, there's like almost perfect space for this. It's almost flush with the frame. This tube is gonna have to stick out a little bit, but I don't think that's the end of the world. And the more flat we mount this, the more suspension travel we get, but the softer the suspension will feel. And if we, the more vertical we mount it, uh, the less suspension travel, but uh, the suspension will be more stiff. Now I kinda wanna mount it like in the middle. This will give us, I think it was seven inches of travel, of suspension travel, but this spring is only a 120 pound spring. So I'm hoping that this is strong enough to support the weight of this motor, because I'll admit this motor kinda does weigh a lot, as well as the battery. So hopefully this spring is strong enough, but we do have adjustable preload, adjustable dampening, as well as adjustable, uh, I forget what this does, but it's, it's all adjustable, so if it doesn't work, we can adjust it, or worst case, we just move it more vertical and just lose suspension travel. But uh, I think the only space for this shock is just mounting it next to the motor, pretty much right about here. So.
Really? Oh, the swing arm's not grounded. There it is. Look at that. Yeah, so after staring at this, I, yeah. I don't think this is gonna work. I don't think just one of these shocks is gonna be enough to support the weight of this thing. Maybe if we mounted this vertical, maybe it would work, but I'm trying to get as much suspension travel out of the setup as possible. That's why I'm trying to lean this thing as far forward as I can to be able to get a decent amount of suspension travel out of this. And now that I'm looking at it, yeah, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's enough. If this spring was like maybe four or 500 pounds, maybe it would work, but it's only, uh, what was it, 120 pound spring? So now I do have another one of these shocks. Uh, it's identical, it's the same thing. And I can mount this one on this side. It's just gonna have to stick out a lot further on this side than it, on that side, so it's not gonna be symmetrical. But I, I think that's fine. It's, it's not really in the way of anything. Your feet are over here, your legs are over here. So it's not gonna be in the way of anything. It's just gonna not look symmetrical, which is gonna drive me nuts. But I think it's the only way to make this setup work. It's just run two of these shocks. So let me get this one tacked into place and then we can figure out how we're gonna how we're going to attach the top of the shocks to the frame. Wow, that is off. Ah, uh, that looks that looks just from this angle, that looks horrid, but, uh, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Yeah, I did have to weld these uh, these mounts for the top of the shocks. I did have to weld them to the frame as well as on the tail section. Normally, you're able to take take the tail section off of the frame. I think it's because if it gets damaged, it's easier to replace just the tail section than the whole frame. Or I think that's why they make the tail sections on dirt bikes removable. Pretty sure, but now it's just a permanent part of the frame, and it's just that's how I had to do this to get this setup to work. Now. If you look at this from the side, it looks fine, but but if you look at it from the back, you can definitely tell that this is not symmetrical. This shock is sticking out about an inch more than this one. It does kind of drive me nuts when I'm looking at it from the back, but I, I, it's the only way I could really get this to work, and I'm pretty sure we are going to need both of these shocks to get the suspension to not collapse when I sit on it, so it's just what I had to do to make this work, but I was originally planning on just using one of these shocks, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna need both. Now, next video, we get to modify this part of the frame down here to have room for a battery box. We need to build a battery box and get it mounted in the frame, so therefore we can mount the battery. I still want all the original plastics to still fit on here. I am planning on putting the gas tank back on here because we kind of, we kind of need the gas tank on here because that's where the seat mounts to on the top, and I'm, I am considering, uh, if there's room, I had an idea of mounting the controller on like the side of the frame right here, and then cutting out the gas tank to where the gas tank kind of goes over the controller, and protects it and everything, so maybe that maybe that would work for a you know, place to put the controller and all that, so. But yeah, this thing looks awesome. I think this one is gonna have way better suspension than my second, the bigger dirt bike project that I built. I think this one's gonna have way better suspension, way better handling and all that kind of stuff because it has most of the weight in the main chassis and most of it is sprung weight, whereas the other electric dirt bike project that 
That rear tire was a lot of unsprung weight. It makes it to where it's not balanced. It was a little. It was a lot of. It was a lot of fun on the road. That thing was a blast riding it on on the road, riding in my neighborhood. As soon as you take it off road, you really notice the difference of the weight distributions and the unsprung weight and all that kind of stuff. And I think this one's gonna have all that stuff. Hopefully, hopefully I'll have all that stuff fixed because uh, weight distribution's a lot better on this, and most of the weight is sprung weight on this one. Anyway. Guess that's it for this video. Thank y'all for watching. I'll see ya in the next video.